Venerable religious and dear parishioners, as we read what St. Paul has to say, and of course our Lord in today's gospel, it's a reminder that they lived in very bad times. We have to remember that the pagan Roman Empire was in full control of everything at that time. And, of course, there were other pagan cultures, pagan Greek culture, uh, pagan Egyptian culture, and it was very rough going, to say the least, to spread Christianity because the teachings of our Lord in so many cases were going diametrically against what people were doing in society. But nevertheless, the good message, the news of the gospel needed to be preached. And what does gospel mean? It means the good news. And that's what the gospel will always be, the good news, that we don't have to succumb to a life of sin and, you know, losing our souls. Rather, God came upon earth to save us from our sins, and he would pay the most painful price imaginable through his sufferings. It doesn't mean we're guaranteed salvation, but it certainly means we have the chance given to us. We have the means given to us that will always be the good news of the gospel. But the gospel goes diametrically against so many things that happen in society, right? The life of sin and the, and the gospel, what's, what is there an inevitable clash between those two? Which one are we going to listen to? The voice of Satan and the world or are we going to listen to the words of Jesus Christ, Almighty God, who came on earth and preached to us the way in which to save our souls? Needless to say, we know whose voice we want to listen to. As I was reading this epistle of St. Paul to the Ephesians, I was reminded that in Ephesus there were pagan temples to the worship of Diana, to the worship of this and that other false god people living a life of sin. And so St. Paul, as part of his exhortation to the Ephesians, says, you know those sins that people commit publicly? And he seems to single out especially sins of the flesh that were so prevalent. He says, don't even talk about them unless there's a real necessity. But immorality and every uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as becomes saints. So there's the word. He says, you're, you're supposed to be trying to become saints. Why would you be talking about these sins that people are committing? Doesn't that ring true today? We see the sins of impurity, the sins of immorality proliferating. And St. Paul says it's not becoming for people who should be saints, should be striving for sanctity, to even talk about it. Unless there's good reason. As a matter of fact, St. Paul goes on to talk about those very sins. But there's a good reason. You see, that's the point. Only if you have a good reason, talk about these sins as something to avoid. And he says, know that no fornicator, no unclean person, no covetous one that is idolatry has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. So he's saying these are serious sins to worship material things, to commit these sins of the flesh. So he's making it very clear. So again... If you have a good reason, talk about it. If you don't, talk about good things. Talk about edifying things. You know, our speech, the way we talk, it betrays or it reveals what's inside. 
what we talk about, how we talk about. So much tells about who we are. Does that Christ-likeness and Mary-likeness come across in what we say? Edifying speech. It's again the message of St. Paul. As I was saying, you know, the it's uh, it was a very sinful world. I mean, St. Paul, as he's preaching to the people, he's probably got right in the background there that pagan temple. He's preaching against it. Don't go there. Don't worship that false idol. So they're surrounded by very difficult, sinful circumstances. But no matter, the word of the gospel, the good news, still has to get out needs to be preached. Go and preach the uh, the gospel to every creature, our Lord said to the, the apostles. Go and teach all nations. The church will keep doing this till the end of time. No matter how big the clash between the truth and error, the truth has to be preached. Goodness has to be preached. So times were very bad. In a sense, times are even worse now. Why do I say that? Because this is now the post-Christian era. That was the pre-Christian era. Our Lord had just come upon earth. Things were, be Christianity was beginning to spread. So in a sense, people could say they didn't even know yet. And now, 2,000 years later, the world cannot say we didn't know. We weren't told. The gospel hadn't been preached yet. This is why we have to always be so concerned about going back spiritually, going back, somehow saying, well, I can take it easy now. I can, you know, step back should never say that. We have to keep moving forward spiritually. Our Lord says in the gospel today, he talks about the unclean spirit that comes back to a person. And what our Lord is revealing, and he's speaking in a very Semitic way, here, is something that the people of Israel would understand at the time. But he's basically saying, you can drive the devil out. You need to drive the devil out. But don't let him back in because not only will he come back, he's going to bring those seven other wicked spirits, even more wicked than himself. Before you had, as I said, more of an excuse, but afterwards there is... Well, there never really is an excuse, but even less can you have an excuse for going backwards spiritually later on. The seven other devils come in. So a very powerful, very powerful imagery that our Lord is using to tell us to never give up. Always keep moving forward. As long as we're in this life, yes, we run that danger of relaxing too much, of giving up. There's that saying, the higher you are, the harder you fall. So never give up. And this reminds me, we should be praying. St. Alphonsus Liguori says this over and over again. Pray every day for the grace of final perseverance. It's not something you can earn. The only way you can get the grace of final perseverance is by praying for it. And he says, pray for it every day. Don't let a single day go by without praying for final perseverance. And he, St. Alphonsus uses the example of a chain. He says, what would you say about a chain that is missing a link here or there or you know other parts of the chain? Well, it's not a, you can't use this chain. It's useless. So he's saying, have your life every day a chain where their link is there every day, dear God, dear Blessed Mother, please obtain for me the grace of final perseverance. And if you pray for it, humbly, perseveringly, you will be given 
that grace, the final perseverance. So let us be uh, observant, let us be zealous in our Lenten observance. Remember, great things are happening spiritually through the Lenten observance. We're doing this not just individually, we're doing it collectively. That's what makes Lent so powerful. Let us meditate on those sufferings of our Lord and our Blessed Mother. Let us unite ourselves with them. And they will be always the greatest source of inspiration and courage to us um, throughout our lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.